So, ladies and gentlemen, a couple things that we need to understand. <clears throat> now, one thing, the reason why I moved you guys around, because I noticed that there was a lot of students that had the exact same answer as other students that was very much incorrect. Please, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know how to you know, do a problem, just try to do your best, ans ask a question or whatever else, but do not just look on somebody else's paper and just go and copy that and say that's my answer, all right? Because I know you all didn't have the exact same wrong answer, and I just want to see what each person has individually. All right, so to graph this, there's a couple different ways we can go about in doing this. The first thing was that we at least need to know what the parent function looks like. So y equals b to the x. When we talked about that, when we looked over exponential functions, this parent graph, remember, has a intercept, a y-intercept, at 0, 1. And the graph looks something like this. All right. So by looking at this equation, there's a couple things that I want to do. I want to be able to understand what the transformations are. The first transformation we notice is we have a negative b, or a, or a negative a in, in our standard function. So we know this is going to be a reflection of the x-axis. Right? If we were going to write the standard form y equals a to the b to the x minus h plus k. Right? That negative a, just like a quadratic, is going to tell you the graph is going to be reflected over the x-axis. Then this minus 3 is your minus k. That's going to tell you to shift the graph <coughs> three units down. So there's a couple ways you guys could do this. One way is you guys could simply just look into reflecting this graph and then reflecting this parent graph and then shifting it three units down. The other way that I told you guys to look at this is to just create a table of values. And you don't have to get crazy on your table of values. When we're doing a table of values, just pick two points. You don't need anything crazy for your amount of table of values. Just pick two points that I'm going to use. And the best two points I told you guys to use is to always go back and use 0 and 1. Okay, Just use 0 and 1. So when we plug in 0 into this case, what I'll have is a um, negative 4 raised to the 0 power minus 3. Okay, Now remember, you're raising 4 to the 0 power, then multiplying it by 0. So 4 to the 0 power is 1. 1 times negative 1 is now negative 1. Negative 1 minus 3 is going to be a negative 4. Then let's do to the one, first power. Again, it's positive 4. right? This member order of operations tells you to do exponents first, then multiplication. So it's 4 raised to the first power, which is just 4, times negative 4. So now it, or times negative 1. So now that's negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. If you want to do another point, go ahead. You know, you could use 2. You could do negative 1. Um, but it's going to get a little bit more difficult when you, if you do the negatives, because then that's going to be a fraction. Um, but then I just have those two points. I could say, all right, well, my, two, my graph then is going to be at 0, negative 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And 1, comma, negative 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And since this graph is being reflected right, and shifted down, I know it will. And let's look at it the other way if I have my black marker. If you were to do this the other way, a reflection would just mean you reflect it now down there, right? And then take this graph and shift it down 3. And what you guys will notice is you're going to have a graph that's going to look like this. And make sure when you guys are doing the graph that you know at least two points. And that's the absolute minimum that you guys would need to graph that, OK? The easiest thing is just create your table with two points. If you get stuck on the reflections, just use a table with two points.